Hello and welcome to this SQL and Power BI tutorial um, on why you should be using SQL views in Power BI. So typically we would have a source system, maybe an application, and that data would be fed into a SQL staging area. Um, we would then have our Power BI environment most likely, if that's what you focus on as a BI tool. And the information flows from SQL there and in other routes as well. So usually in this basic view, what you would see is that you have a route one, which may be ad hoc data requests, the output of a query, maybe an Excel or CSV, and then we have Power BI. And maybe you do your transformations in Power Query and DAX. Now that's great, but there's not much harmony there between your other routes, like your ad hoc data requests. So how can you maximize on this whilst also building in other concepts like simplicity and um, doing the heavy lifting upstream, security and so on. So what we can actually do is implement SQL views. Now, SQL views could act where Power Query and DAX previously were, can do a lot of the heavy lifting. And we're also able to combine a lot of this distribution of data with our ad hoc data requests and build a more sort of elegant solution within the business. And when you bring SQL views into Power BI, you can vastly improve sort of things like redundant data. We can get cleaner data models. We can make things easier for self-service business intelligence um, and really maximize that long life data that the business has appetite for. So before we do that and look into Power BI aspect of things, we can actually jump into SQL Server Management Studio, where I'll showcase how we how we may do this. And again, we'll we'll gradually look at why it's um, it's an advantage to use views um, from SQL. So let's say we select all of our columns from categories and from our products table. As you can see here, um, there's a lot of information, but we're going to have some redundancy here. And the actual output that we want or we were going to try and achieve in Power BI with DAX or Power Query is to get these product categories. But as you can see, it requires a join and um, it requires a flag for discontinued products. And we can actually create this in SQL Server pretty efficiently. And this would then allow us to distribute data down different channels in this shape or format, not just through Power BI. So we can create a view and we'll call it product categories and we just select the columns we require from categories and we need to join that onto products um, through the use of our primary key. So we've got a category ID and then we say where products, the discontinued products is not equal to the flag one, which would mean true. So we have a false flag. And if I, I've already created that view. So now we can actually just select that and query it. We get this very nice um, we've got the company name and we've got the products and we can see the units in stock per product and whether it's discontinued. Um, so yeah, really good to use views in this way where you start to um, use them as a view into aggregations. Uh, they don't consume any storage. If they're not indexed, there's a bit of consistency there as well. So we can go into Power BI, select SQL Server um, and our server name. And importing a view is just as simple as importing a table. You can see the views look slightly different. They don't have that table icon and we can find what we were looking for very easily. So we have our product categories there. We can select that. It might take a while to evaluate the preview um, and we can load it in. And we'll take a look at this when it loads in and it comes in in exactly the shape we were expecting. But like I said, this can improve our data model because things are more readable and clear. Um, it reduces redundancy. We can, you know, use things like security from the SQL side and we're just consistent and we can collaborate really well. As usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.